If you're like many pivot table users, the first thing you do after inserting a pivot table is waste a minute or two fixing the layout so it's just how you want. Well, waste no more because now you can set the default for any new pivot tables in any workbook, including how to set the default number format, which in my opinion must be one of the most annoying time wasters there is. Let's take a look. Now before we get started, I should mention that the functionality in this video is only available in Excel 2019 onward or if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription. All right, in this file I've got some data. Let's quickly insert a pivot table and I'll pop it on a new worksheet. We're going to put the category and product in the row labels and the sales in the values area. Then on the design tab, I'm going to choose a different layout. So instead of compact form, which it's currently in, I wanted an outline form. That's going to allow me to repeat all the item labels. So in column A, we'll see beverages, condiments, and so on repeated. And let's put the subtotals at the top of the group. In here, I can also choose to change the settings for the grand totals. I'm going to leave them as is. Let's also choose a different color. We'll go with this turquoise style. And lastly, the number format needs some work. Let's add a comma separator and no decimal places. Okay, so I've spent about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so performing those steps and it might not seem like a lot, but it's a pain having to repeat them again and again for every pivot table. So let's set this as my default style. In the file tab, under options, under data, I can edit the default pivot table layout. Now, because I had a cell in a pivot table selected, it's populated that reference there, and I can simply click import here to bring in those settings. You can see my subtotals, grand totals, layout, and the repeating of item labels is all done for me. You can of course make changes here if you prefer. I can also go into the pivot table options here. This is the right click options menu that we normally see in pivot tables. I can change the layout and format, totals and filters, display, printing, and data. I'm going to leave them as is for this pivot table. In this dialog box, you can also reset it to the default. So I'm happy with that. I'll click OK and OK again. Now, in order for these settings to stick, you need to close Excel and then open it again. So I'll pause while I do that. OK, so let's go and insert another pivot table. This time I'm going to put it on the existing worksheet. We'll just put it beside the original one and then we'll build exactly the same pivot table. So you can see it's picked up some of my settings. It's got the layout correct, but it hasn't retained the style and my number formats don't have the comma separators. Now the style is easy to deal with. Let's go into the design tab, choose the style, and then I'm just going to right click and set it as the default. That's going to set it as the default for this workbook, not all future workbooks. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to set the default number format for regular pivot tables, which is what we have here. However, if you add your data to the data model, that is Power Pivot, then we can set the number formats there. So let's go ahead and insert another pivot table. And this time I'm going to check the Add This to the Data Model button. I'll put it on a new worksheet and click OK. So now my data's in the data model. What I can do is go to the Power Pivot tab, Manage, that opens the Power Pivot window. And in here, I select the sales column. Let's add a comma separator, and we're going to decrease the number of decimals. Now this doesn't change the underlying value. You can see in the formula bar that the decimal place is still there. It's just for display purposes. And anytime I use this sales field in any pivot tables, it's going to retain the formatting that I've set in the Power Pivot window. So let's close it down. And now let's build the pivot table. So there we go. I have my pivot table formatted in the layout that I want. I've got the color style that I want and my numbers have the comma separators. Now there are some knock on effects when you add your data to the data model. The first is the get pivot data function and references are slightly different. So let's reference a cell in this pivot table. Get pivot data is automatically populated and you can see the word measures in the formula. When you see measures, you know that this is a pivot table generated from the power pivot model. Let's go and have a look at that same cell in a regular pivot table. 
So here we'll reference beverages and apple juice. You can see the formula is much shorter. It's still get pivot data, but the structure of it's slightly different. Let's just take a look at those side by side. So I'm just going to add a new window and then we're going to arrange them horizontally. And I'll use the formula text function to just display that formula. Let's copy it onto sheet one, which is the power pivot pivot table. So now you can see the two functions beside one another. Whilst they're both using the get pivot data function, the syntax in the formula that references the power pivot pivot table is a little bit more complicated. Now it doesn't really matter unless you want these formulas to be dynamic. And then you need to allow for this. I've included a link in the video description that will take you to the tutorials on the two different get pivot data formulas. Now the other difference is that with power pivot pivot tables, you no longer have access to be able to add calculated fields and items. You can see they're grayed out. Instead, in Power Pivot, we need to add any calculated columns in the Power Pivot window. So I can click on Add Column and in the formula bar, I can enter my formula. And we do that with the DAX formula language. And if we want a calculated item, then these are similar to measures that we have in Power Pivot. And they're also written with DAX. And the good thing is the DAX formula language is very similar to the Excel functions that we know and love. If you'd like to learn DAX, then there's a link in the video description to my Power Pivot course, which covers DAX. Now, some things to note, you'll find that the formatting that is applied in the Power Pivot window will feed through to any pivot tables that use this field. So it will retrospectively update them. However, any styles that you've set as your default style, including the styles, will not be applied retrospectively to pivot tables you've built prior to setting those preferences. The other thing to keep in mind is that the style preference is only specific to this workbook, whereas the preferences we set via the file tab and then options, they'll be available in any new workbooks you create. And of course, the number formatting set in Power Pivot has to be done in each Power Pivot model. I hope you found these techniques useful. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.